This is our fifth time. I wouldn't have dreamt of what I learned here. This encourages you and inspires you. And it's so relaxing and the food is great. <laughs> I love retreats at sea. And I will do it again. And you should be here. Holy Trinity is at work full time here. Three million Italians just watched Pope Francis say he's hoping for something that seems contrary to the Catholic faith. Join us with the latest from the Eternal City Church Milton's Rome correspondent, Dr. Jules Gomez. Jules, the media is all buzzing about something Pope Francis said on TV about hell. What's the story? Uh, Brad, on Sunday night, Pope Francis appeared on Italian national television. In fact, he appeared on the most popular uh, show, uh, Che Tempo Che Fa, uh, What's the Weather Like, which is compared by uh, a, a very left-wing presenter, Fabio Fazio. And uh, Pope Francis said something pretty controversial you would never expect a Catholic Pope to say. So, you know, I guess the Pope would be speaking in Italian, and uh, do we know exactly what he said? Well, absolutely. I watched the clip, and the presenter, Fabio Fazio, asked him this question. He said, uh, it's also difficult to imagine hell, to imagine a father who condemns for eternity. And then Pope Francis responded, you can see the interview in the video, uh, Pope Francis responded and said, what I'm going to say is not a dogma of faith, but my own personal view. And then he said, I'd like to think of hell as empty. I hope it is. So when Francis says hell is empty, like nobody, uh, does he mean like no human beings whatsoever? And there are also no angels as well? I mean, we know at least fallen angels are there. I mean, our Lord in Matthew 25, 41 says, uh, quote, Then he shall say to them also that shall be on his left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire, which was prepared for the devil and his angels. And then Jude 1, 6, likewise, uh, says, And the angels who kept not their principality, but forsook their ha own habitation, he has reserved unto darkness in everlasting chains unto the judgment of the great day. So you know, hell was made precisely for the fallen angels. And uh, so is the Pope hoping there is no men and no angels there? And if so, can you even hope for something contrary to the faith? Uh, when Brad, my wife and I were watching uh, the show live, and when Pope Francis made the statement about hell being empty, my wife turned to me and said, no wonder on a number of occasions Pope Francis has said that Judas will not be in hell. Now, you're right, Brad, because, uh, you know, the New Testament uh, does not mention the word hell very often. In fact, some translations, English translations, mentions hell only 12 times. Times. However, the New Testament repeatedly talks about eternal punishment. And John the Baptist, for example, warns about eternal punishment for those who reject God's salvation. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire, and God will burn with and the chaff, God will burn, he says, with unquenchable fire. That is eternal. And then Jesus watch, you know, warns of eternal punishment for those those who reject God's salvation, you, we all know that, you know, the parable of the sheep and the goats. And uh, uh, Jesus also says, whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, either in this age or in the age to come. And then we have Paul warning of eternal punishment for those who uh, persist in sin, fornicators, idolaters, ad adulterers, sodomites, etc. He says, none of these will inherit the kingdom of God. And, you know, you mentioned Judas, uh, 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 Jules. Just as a follow-up, the catechism of the Council of Trent, uh, the first complete universal catechism to be published by the Catholic Church, uh, actually mentions Judas being in hell. Uh, it presupposes that on page 166, for instance, the catechism, we read, quote, others, on the contrary, give themselves to such melancholy and grief as utterly to abandon all hope of salvation. 
Such certainly was the condition of Judas, who repented, hanged himself, and thus lost soul and body. And again, on page 198 of the same Universal Catechism, we read, quote, Some are attracted to the priesthood by ambition and love of honors. They derive no other fruit from their priesthood than was derived by Judas from the apostleship, which only brought him everlasting destruction, end quote. So it seems like the opinion... Uh, of the first universal Catholic catechism, and this is after 1,500 years of contemplating these mysteries, taught that at least Judas was in hell with the fallen angels. Uh, so, Jules, as a biblical scholar, uh, have you noticed if the theological world has been moving in the direction of accepting what Pope Francis says about hell, or has it moved in the other direction where they're actually more affirming of the belief in hell? That's a very interesting question, Brad, because I've been very impressed and surprised that from the 1990s onwards, there have been a number of serious scholarly works using philosophical arguments and published by university presses, all saying that, you know, uh, defending the existence of hell. I mean, uh, let, let me mention just a couple, Jerry Walls, Hell, The Logic of Damnation, University of Notre Dame Press, 1992. Jonathan Kwanik, The Problem of Hell, Oxford University Press, 1993, Charles Seymour, Theodicy of Hell, Kluver Academic Press, 2000. And besides that, uh, instead of jettis jettisoning belief in hell, a lot of people continue to believe in hell. So uh, in 2004, 70% of Americans said they believe in hell. 92% of Americans who attended church weekly said they believe in hell. And in 2009, 36% of people in Britain, a very post-Christian country, said they believed in hell. In fact, in 2011, Eleven Time magazine ran a cover story entitled What If There's No Hell? Uh, and, you know, very interestingly, uh, sociological peer reviewed journals are running uh, articles basically saying that uh, those who believe in the existence of hell, the crime rates among those people, the rates of reoffending uh, are very low compared to those who reject the existence of hell. So now we have, uh, you, you know, what would you say personally, Jules, if you have someone that's, uh, <laughs> okay, you know, he's saying that, you know, I'm not binding anybody. Uh, I'm not binding anybody to believe what I believe or hope what I hope in. But when he says there's just absolutely no empty hell, uh, the, the whole reason that hell exists is to house the, uh, the fallen angels. That's why exactly the purpose of it, the church teaches. And then anybody else who happens to be, you know, misfortunate enough to uh, die in a state of, uh, of, of sin. So if you're not believing that mainstream teaching of the church in fallen angels that they fell and that they was a hell was created for them you know even though he's not binding other people to follow this and we have to make that clear people don't have to worry about you know following francis on this hope but it seems a bit odd that you would be heading a church and not necessarily hope hoping for something that seems to be against church teaching uh, well, Brad, when I used to uh, share the gospel with atheists in Great Britain, uh, one of the questions they would always ask me is, you know, how cruel is can your God be to condemn someone to hell? And I would always respond and ask them, do you believe in human rights? And they would say, of course we do. And I would say, well, hell is the greatest testimony to human rights and free will because God so loves you and, you know, he so responds respects your human right to reject him, that uh, if you've rejected him in this world, if you've not wanted to live with him, to fellowship with him, to obey him, well, he doesn't want you, you know, he respects your right to continue to maintain your position all throughout eternity. And so uh, hell is the greatest testimony to human rights and to free will. But to Francis, you know, th this is a question that always occurs in my mind. Well, if you are, you know, uh, 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 
a salesman or if you're the CEO of a Fiat car showroom and people come to you and you're constantly telling them, you know, uh, uh, the, the Fiat car is not really worth buying. Why don't you try Mercedes? Uh, in that case, you should be working for Mercedes and not for uh for fear. It's basically a matter of integrity where you sign the dotted line, you know, as priests. Uh, uh, one has to take certain vows, uh, that uh, certain oaths that they would abide by what the church teaches. And uh, it's a matter of, uh, it's the opposite of integrity to believe one thing personally and then to claim to uphold uh, the teaching of the church, which you personally disagree with in public. Excellent points, Jules, especially about the free will. God just will not violate the free will, even if it takes you away from him for all eternity, because you can't force love. The takeaway, of course, from all of this is Pope Francis clearly stated, what I'm going to say is my own personal view, meaning you, me, we don't have to believe it, or any of the myriad of the off-the-cuff remarks that come across in a truncated or stilted way that perhaps confuse or perplex us. If he happens to believe something contrary to the faith, God forbid, he will have to go before the divine tribunal, like all of us, and explain that to Christ, who happens to be his boss. That's between him and God. Pray for all our church leaders uh, that they believe and teach the entire deposit of faith. And Jules, thank you so much for your story and all the insights. Thank you, Brad. Thanks again for watching today's episode of Rome Dispatch. The show is brought to you by donors like Real Estate for Life. If you're looking to buy or sell a home and want to support our mission, visit realestateforlife.org. Again, that's realestateforlife.org. Be sure to tell them Church Militant sent you. God bless.